To create a stacked wall in Revit, Revit has already um, been preloaded with a stacked wall type uh, that lets you get started. To start using this tool, um, I'll first go into my model space and click in an elevation tag to bring up an elevation view of a wall I want to change to a stacked wall type. If, for example, I want to turn this wall into a um, CMU wall, a three foot CMU wall at the base um, with the rest to be a hollow metal construction. I'll first want to grab the wall I want to change and then go to the type selector at the top at the options bar and pull it down to the stacked wall type. In this case, Revit is warning me that a few dimensions um, have changed because the wall type has changed. I'm going to go ahead and close up dialog box. Um, now, the wall should have changed to a stacked wall type, but if it's not the kind I want, uh, what you can do is you can actually load different wall types into this, this wall type and, and create a new unique uh, stacked wall type. Uh, to do this, the key is you first have to build these wall types uh, separately uh, and make sure it's, it's already loaded in your model. Since I've shown in another video how to create new wall types, I'll skip that um, and assume that we have the wall types we need already loaded. So to create a new stacked wall type, I'm going to, while selecting the wall, I'm going to choose the element properties button at the options bar at the top. Um, with the element properties window open, I'm going to click edit new and duplicate. Um, at this point, I want to give the new stacked wall type a name. In this case, I'll call it hollow metal over CMU and click OK. With this uh, dialog box now open, you, you may or may not see this preview uh, window on the side. This is showing you what the actual wall type looks like as you build it. Um, to bring this preview window up, click the preview button at the bottom of the screen here. So to start changing out those wall types for uh, new ones, um, in the structure parameter, click the edit button. And this brings you into uh, a type selector. Um, and you'll notice it's organized from top to bottom. These are the different layers that, that you can swap out. Uh, so clicking in the field of the top layer um, will bring me a pull down menu of all the wall types um, that are loaded in the project. And I can start choosing. Um, which type I want for the top layer. You notice in the field next to it is height, and that'll be variable for the top layer. That'll allow the wall to stretch to the height that it needs to be. Going to the second layer, if I click in its field, I can choose from the pull down menu uh, the different type here. In this case, I'll make it CMU. Next to um, its type selector is the height field, um, and if I um, click in this box and change it. Um, you can see in the preview window um, the height that's changing for it. Uh, the offset parameter uh, in the next field over allows you to start shifting those wall layers from each other's center um, forward and back. Um, and this can be changed by using a negative or positive number. I'll go ahead and uh, bring that back to zero. At the end um, is the uh, flip parameter. And if there were a different material on one face of the wall type or another, um, it's this parameter that you can flip inside to outside and outside to inside. For example, if, if one side of the wall construction or drywall, and the other side were the siding. It's it's this checkbox that would use you would use to um, flip that around. You aren't limited uh, with the number of layers um, that you can add. You can always add uh, three or more layers to the stacked wall type, and you can change their order by first selecting the layer, and then using the up down buttons. Um, once the wall type is where you want it. Click OK, OK again, and OK one more time. And it should make the changes uh, in the wall that you're editing. 